Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. This is Anik from Dark Matter and today we'll be learning how to make your own FPV drone using Brahma F4 right here in India. And to begin, we'll be starting with collating some of the things that are required to make the drones. So without any further ado, let's go to our build. First, we'll be needing a flight controller which is typically the motherboard or the brain for the drone and we'll be using the Brahma F4 flight controller made in India to make this drone. Next is the ESC or the electronic speed controller which we can say that it is the heart of the drone which powers the motor and over here we'll be using our very own Vishnu 50 made in India. Next we'll be needing a frame for this drone and we'll be using the ZMR 250 or the Q250 for this build. Now the ZMR 250 or the Q250 is a 5 inch drone frame and as we are planning to make a 5 inch drone so we are using this frame. Next we'll be needing 4 motors for this build. Two will be clockwise and two will be counterclockwise and similarly we'll be needing four propellers two clockwise and two counterclockwise for this build now one thing to note while buying motors is that we'll be using only bldc motors for this build as the esc produces pwm outputs and it can be only used to drive a bldc or a brushless dc motor over here we'll be using 2600 kv motors and if you're interested in learning what KV signifies and how to select motors for your build, let us know in your comments below and we'll make a detailed video of the same. Next, we'll be needing a transmitter and a receiver to control your drone. And over here, we'll be having two options. First being the ELRS, which can be utilized to make long range FPV drones. As on paper, the ELRS protocol claims to have a range of about 10 kilometers. And the next option is to use a 2.4 gigahertz transmitter and receiver which can be used to make a drone which can fly up to about 1 km in range. Next, we'll be needing an FPV camera to capture the first person visuals from the FPV drone. Then we also need a VTX to transmit that video signal from the drone to the receiver. And to receive the video signals, we need an FPV goggle or a FPV receiver so that we are able to see the FPV footage. Now one thing to note is that the FPV camera, VTX and the FPV goggles are only required if you want to see the FPV video of the drone. If you do not require that, it is not mandatory for making your drone fly. Next, we need a 3 to 6 as LiPo battery to power our drone. Now it completely depends upon your budget and requirement on what battery you need. On layman terms, if you are using a 3S battery, it will typically give you half the speed of what 6S batteries give. But we will be needing better motors for 6S and also the price will be higher. And lastly, we will be needing a balanced LiPo charger to charge your battery. And we will be needing a few cable ties to tie the battery to the frame, a shouldering iron set, a screwdriver set and a bit of double sided tape. Now we are ready and set up to build our FPV drone. I am once again noting down the list of items needed so that you can take a screenshot of the same while buying. I have also added black tape and plus to this list. Now let us get to the fun part of making our own drone. Now we will be going to our website to download the Betaflight configurator from the softwares and download section. And after going to the official downloads page, we will be scrolling down to where we will be able to find all of the files. Now for Mac users, we will be using the DMG file and for the Windows user, we will be using the exe file. Now once the download is complete, we just have to drag and drop it to the applications folder. Now you might be getting this prompt as it is downloaded from the internet, but to circumvent that, we'll just have to go and set up the applications folder, right click on the Betaflight configurator and click on open and wait for some time for it to open. And once the Betaflight configurator loads, we'll be connecting our flight controller to the PC by using a USB-C cable. And once it is connected, we'll be able to see the LEDs flashing and inside of the beta flight configurator, we'll be getting this warning as the ESC is not connected and the FC is not calibrated. Now we can see that the gyro accelerometer and the barrow is detected. Now we have to click on the motors to check out the motor direction so that we can attach the motor to the frames where one and four are clockwise and two and three are counterclockwise. We are starting with motor number two, which is a CCW motor. Then we are moving to motor number 1 which is a clockwise motor. Now we are fixing the motor number 3 which is a CCW motor. And lastly motor number 4 which is a clockwise motor. Now we will be moving to the FC and we will be starting with prepping the solder pads with some solder. And we will be starting by shouldering the ELRS receiver into the FC. We will be starting by connecting the positive to the 5 volt supply, the negative to the ground. 
the TX to the RX and the RX to the TX. Next we'll be connecting the FPV camera where we'll be connecting the positive to the 5 volt supply, the negative to the ground and the communication to the cam port. Next is the VTX and we connect the 9 volt supply to the power, the ground to the ground and the communications to the VTX port. Now we'll be starting with the ESC and before starting only I have attached the capacitor and prepped up the shoulder pads. Now we must always check the polarity of the battery and the capacitor that we are connecting to the ESC. The positive must be connected to the positive and the negative must be connected to the negative. Now we are starting by attaching the fourth motor to our ESC. Now we are attaching the third motor. Next is the second motor. And lastly, motor number one. Now all the motors, the capacitor and the power cable is connected to the ESC and we have to connect the FC now. We are placing the FC onto the mounting board and now we are connecting the 8-pin connector cable. Now we'll have to keep in mind the protocols used by the ESC and FC. If they are not same, we'll have to wire it manually. Once everything is connected, we have to connect the battery to check that if it is powering on and we hear the ESC powering on the motors. Now I'll be connecting the FC to the beta flight configurator for further configuration. Now again after launching beta flight we will be seeing this warning which we need to ignore and then we will need to set up the motors and to do that we will be going into the motor section and then we will be going into the ESC motor features and where it is written disabled we will be selecting the D-Shot 300 and then we will be clicking on save and reboot. Now after the flight controller reboots we will now be checking the motor direction once again and to do so we will be going into the motors tab and then we'll be clicking on the I understand the risk radio button. Now once we increase the slider for the master slider, we'll be able to see that the motor starts to rotate. Now it is the time to check the motors by placing your hand right at the edge of the motors to check the direction of the spin. And if it is not going right, then we have the solve for you, don't worry. We just have to click on motor direction and then click on I understand the risk and then click on wizard. Now when you click on the start motors option, then you will be able to see that all four motors are spinning. Now once again you need to check that if the motors are spinning as per the given diagram and if one of the motors is spinning in the reverse direction, then we just need to click on the motor number and it will be rectified. Next we will be going on the setup tab to calibrate our accelerometer and check the status of the UART1 port from the ports tab. Next we will be going into the receiver tab to check that if our receiver is connected properly or not. And if you are using an ELRS transmitter receiver, you will see that it is not working. To fix that, we will have to switch from SBUS to CRSF and once we reboot, we will be able to see that it is working perfectly fine. Now we will be setting the flight modes and the arm button for the drone and we will be able to see that the arm is already disabled because we do not want any accidents to happen and we will have to select the particular buttons. The particular buttons comes as AUX1, AUX2, AUX3 and the AUX2 is a 3-way switch. So we need to set the particular range in which we want to set up our flight modes. And if you want to learn more about receiver setup and flight modes, please let us know in the comments below and we'll be creating a video for that as well. And now the motors are arming, so we are all set to put on our propellers. So we'll be starting off by unscrewing the bolts from the motors. And just to be sure of the motor directions, we'll be connecting once again to the beta flight to check out the diagram. And to understand which propeller is uh, clockwise and which is counterclockwise, we just need to spin it in our hand. And if the pitch is up while spinning in clockwise direction, then it is a CW. Other than that, if the pitch is downward while we are spinning in the clockwise direction, then it is a counterclockwise propeller. And if you want to know what is pitch, this diagram can help you understand it better. And now is the time to introduce the second most jugaru thing in India, the double sided tape by which we'll be sticking the FPV camera, the ELRS receiver and the VTX. And now let me introduce the first most jugaru thing in India, the black tape or the cello tape. Let us know in your comments below what is the most jugaru thing that you have black taped or cello tape and we'll be giving away prizes to the most like comments in our next video. Now one important thing to note is that there should be no loose wires in the build otherwise it can tangle with the propeller and can result in catastrophic failures in the sky which we do not want to happen. And also I'd like to highlight that the propellers are very sharp when they are rotating very fast so please be very careful while you are dealing with it. And now we have successfully made a budget friendly and lightweight FPV racing drone build. And now with the help of cable ties we will be securing the battery to the drone frame and we'll be chopping away the excess of the cable tie. And now our drone frame is ready to dock the Indian skies. 
प्लीज बी केयरफुल वाइल यू फ्लाइंग इट and be safe and oh yes i almost forgot to mention that bramba f4 supports both analog and digital ost and right now you can see that the analog ost is working perfectly fine and now there is nothing that can stop us from that immersive goosebumps wala rapjet racing experience thank you everyone see you soon